All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, this is Aksham Gar. As you can see, the lesson is titled, Be Prepared to Forsake Everything for the Lord. All right? So if the Heavenly Father has granted you spiritual eyes to see that Havakakwadash, that Holy Spirit, right, to see what particular times we're in, you're able to see that what? This thing is about to come to an end. Where every possession that you have in this in this life here, it don't mean a damn thing, right? And literally, when it comes down to it, you're gonna have to give it up, man, right? All the possessions that you you know spent and labored your whole life to get your car, your crib, right? The different you know uh, uh, you know types of technologies and different things that you had, we all gonna have to give it up, man. Clothes, we all gonna have to give all of it up, right? And only the true men of the Heavenly Father, right, are going to be prepared to do those things, right? And we see that exemplified through the scriptures, man, right? So I'm just going, uh, I'm just going, I'm going to grab a scripture for y'all, right? Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And I'm going to show y'all, right? I should already be familiar with this, right? And it says, And Yahweh walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers, right? Y'all know y'all should know who Andrew and Peter, uh, you know, it's like it, uh, Peter and Andrew was, right? And it says, and he saith unto me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, right? And they straightway left their nets and followed him. So that's the point, right? A true man of the heavenly father, right, is going to drop everything for the Lord. Now, it's just saying that in this particular time right now where, you know, you still got to pay bills and stuff like that. Right here, you know, until they, you know, uh, start mandating certain things and start forcing that MOB, right? No, you still got to go to work and pay your bills and so that way you can go out on the highways and byways or, you know, you do, do whatever you call to do in this ministry, right? You still got to operate. It's not saying that. But, I, but what the message that I'm trying to push across is the fact that when those things are mandated, right, that arm juice is mandated for you to get in order for you to get the work, Right. Or you have to have that MOB in your in your right hand or in your forehead in order to go to work or pay bills or live in this society. You're going to have to forsake it all, man. You're going to have to give everything up. So you got to start living in that mindset where you're starting to be detached from certain things, man. Right? Start going without certain things, man. Start having a level of detachment with you and your family to a certain extent, man. Right? Now, I'm not saying just, you know, walk out on your family. No, I'm, I'm sitting here telling you that... You you don't know what's coming, right? So at the point of, the point the point of the matter is you don't want anything to hinder you from serving the Lord. You have to have that mindset of preparedness that hey shit I might have to give all this stuff up. You know what I mean? And that's literally the, uh, that's a great mindset to have, man. A, a level of mindset like where, where you where you where you really don't care about the things that you really got. You're content with what you got, right? But if you lose it all, fuck it. That's the type of mentality you need. Right. Let me keep going. It says, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on thence, he saw two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and, and John, his brother, and a ship with uh, Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them and they immediately left their ship and their father and followed them. So the point is their father. Right. That's their family. Correct. But the point is they was willing to drop all that. Their family. They, 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 they possessions, they job, everything for the Lord, man, right? Because if you do that for the Lord, he's he, He's going to reward you for that, man, All right? Let me get this for you. The book of Luke, chapter 18, and I'm going to grab 28, right? Check this out. It says, then Peter said, lo, we have left. So you saw how, so you see how Peter just left everything, right? And check this. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee, and said unto and said unto them, right? And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of the most high sake, right? Who shall who shall who shall, who shall not receive many for more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. So the Heavenly Father gonna reward us greatly, man. But the time is coming where you might have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, go without a lot of stuff, man. You know, of course, the Lord is going to provide for his men. You know, you read that in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and 13. 
his servants shall eat and drink, and we're gonna be rejoicing, right? You going you gonna have the essentials for life. But the point of the point of the matter is if you're holding on to your possessions, if you have that carnal mind, right? Or you don't want to give up those possessions, right? Or or, or or certain certain you know different things and certain pleasures, you can't serve the Lord, man. You're not fit for this, right? Because you see how a man of the Lord is gonna deal when it comes to the Heavenly Father, right? When it comes to serving the Heavenly Father, he's gonna drop it all, man. Say, fuck it, fuck this, fuck, forget the society, everything, man. Forget it. It's about this word, man. It's about this truth. You know? You can't be no coward in this thing, man. You got to have a heart of a lion, man. Right? Let me keep going. Luke chapter 14, verse 33. It says, so likewise, whosoever, it's like it. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So, like I said, man, the time is coming, right? Me personally, I still got a car, still got a crib, right? I still got, you know, my, my, my you know, my, my, my situation at the at the crib and everything like that, right? But the point is, right, when it comes down to it, and I can't have this anymore. The job man, my my, my job mandates that I have to take that orange juice, man, right? I have to quit that job, man. I have to say hell no, right? Or when or when society starts to say that. You know, mandates that, yo, y'all got to take this MOB in your right hand or in your forehead. I have to say hell no, man. I have to detach myself from society. But if my heart, right, is, is attached, to, attached to the goods that I have in this world, man, I'm not going to do that. And this is why I have to, you have, me and you both, we have to practice a certain level of detachment from the things that we have and the people that we have in our life, right? Now, it's not saying that at this point in time you can't enjoy your wife. Or your children. But what if what if something, what if the Lord re requires their spirit? Because they might be a hindrance to you in those times. If you if you have such a, a certain uh, attachment to it, that shit might break you, man. It might break you. So it's to the point where it's not saying that you don't love your family, but you have to practice a certain level of detachment. You got to be a little bit more reserved with them, man. Right? Because if that time comes, the Lord might require them and their spirits, and that, and that might be the Lord showing them mercy, but you, th uh, uh, you know, uh, through a carnal eye, right, you might see it as such like, damn, you know, was that, you know, uh, 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 they, 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 they did, I'm gone, they're gone from me, right, I'm separated from my family, right, and this is why we always had to remain spiritual, because we were, were able to discern the difference between judgment and mercy, right, but the point is, for somebody who's weaker in the faith, right, who, who's, um, really attached to that uh their families or the things that they have seeing a family get checked you know checked in, in jacob's trouble that might break you so this is the time to practice now to be building up your spirit now because in the time of jacob's trouble it ain't to be time to building up your spirit you supposed to be already be rooted and grounded man right because if you're still trying to root and ground yourself in jacob's trouble unless you're one of those cats that come in at the last hour right you probably ain't gonna make it right so this is the point. This is the reason why we have to practice this now, man, right? We have to be prepared for that. Being prepared means you already know what's coming, right? So you so you, so you, you stack up now or you do what you got to do now to get ready for, right? Don't wait until the day of and then try to get ready, man. Don't do it, right? Let me grab another scripture for y'all. Grab another, another, another jaw, another jaw. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to grab uh, 24. All right. It says, Then Yahweh Shai said to his, uh, fuck it. Then Yahweh Shai said to his disciples, right? Said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, right? And whosoever will, uh, will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it, right? So listen, if you, if you like lose your life, Right. If you die. Right. Or or not even just physically dying. But if you lose the things that you have. Right. Or, or, or whatever your life is, maybe your profession or certain things. Right. Or, or the goods that you may have. If you lose all that for the, for the name of the Heavenly Father, man, you're blessed. man, Right. Because you're going to get a life back. But if you hold on to all these things, your family, your wife, your children, your, your car, your house, your job, you hold on to those things. Right. 
and, and you don't cleave unto the Heavenly Father, but you cleave unto those things, those carnal things, man, you're going to lose everything you got anyway, man. Right? But see, this is the thing. Yo, yo, people will know this and then still cleave unto these carnal things. And ultimately, we understand that's just because it got to be rooted in you, man. It, it has to be ordained for you to uh, 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 to make it through it, you know, through, it's like it, through Jacob's trouble, right? Because the 144,000 is predestined to be the uh, uh, the 144,000 before, the, uh, before they were even born. But the point that I'm trying to make is we don't know who's the 144,000. So right now, you have to practice that, man, and move in such a way where you feel as though that you are, man, right? Or you're trying to be that, right? And then if you're doing that and you're, and, it, and you're successful in it, then you were meant to be that 144,000, right? And that should be all of our hopes. So this is why we got to continue, right, to deny ourselves, deny ourselves, man, of certain pleasures, right, of our certain of certain desires that we have, right? Because it's all for the strengthening of, uh, strengthening of us, right? When you go without for something for a little while, it makes you uh, 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 stronger and stronger a little bit, like especially with fasting, man. So it's not just fasting with food, but it may be from spending time with your ribs so much, spending time with your kids so much, playing a video game or watching TV so much or, you know, just certain things, man. Detaching from, you know, maybe going out so much, right? Certain things, man. You have to detach yourself and you have to deny yourself these things, man. Because when the time comes for you to give it all up, if you haven't been practicing denying yourself, from, from certain, you know, goods and stuff like It's going to be harder to just go cold turkey without it, man. Right? And that's like anything. It's, it's hard to go cold turkey. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, but that's the point, man. We got to continue to deny ourselves. And everything we do for the Heavenly Father, man, he sees it. Right? Let me grab this precept for you, right? Hebrews chapter 6. And let me get verse 10. It says, for the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which he has showed towards his name, and that he have ministered to the saints and do minister. So everything that you do for the Heavenly Father, man, right, everything that you've given up and, 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 and to, 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 the, uh, to make his kingdom come to fruition, right, the Heavenly Father, right, he's not going to forget that, man. He's going to bless you and he's going to reward you for doing everything that you did and everything that you put in, all that work, right? And a part of that work that you put in, guess what's going to happen from that work, man? Let me show you, because when you have works, right, you have faith. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, right, and by faith whereby ye have believed. So that's the point, man. When Jacob's trouble come, you may be one of those, right, that shall not taste of death. Right? Let me get that. Let me, let me get that. I'm back in Matthew 16. Right. It says right here, it says, let me just read it from the top because I like this part too. It says, For what is uh for what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's self explanatory. For the Son of Man shall come in his glory, it's so like in the glory of his father, which is in with with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death. So they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. So that's the point, man. The heavenly father, he's going to preserve some of us, right? Based on our works and our faith, whereby we have believed, right? And he's not going to let some of us taste death, man. We're going to be preserved until the end. So we see Yahweh Shai and them angels, they come rolling in, doo -doo -doo -doo, right? And they come and save us and beam us up on, uh, up on them chariots, man, and bomb the shit out of America. So, you know, Lord willing, we, uh, we last until that day. We're waiting on the heavenly father. To, uh, to, to bring all this into fruition, man, right? Because for right now, you know, we, we sitting tight, you know, staying diligent, staying fervent in the spirit, right? Continue to push this truth to the four corners of the earth because we know that in the book of Matthew, it says once once this uh this truth has been spread to all four corners of the earth, man, then shall the end come. So that's, be, that's what we waiting for. We waiting for the Heavenly Father to pull that trigger, man. And when he does, we're going to be ready, man. So, with that, man, I hope that you Akim and Akwathim, right, were edified, exhorted, and comforted. And with that, I want to say Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Barak, Thumb, Shalom.